um, please go check that out too. Um, and then our conference committee. I uh, want to say thanks to those who do the thankless task. <laughs> they, um, they review all of the sessions that come in. They do a lot of outreach to all of our speakers. Um, it is a lot of work to go through that. We get several hundred submissions uh, for people that want to speak at the conference. Um, and these, this group does a great job of going through, um, reviewing, evaluating, uh, and rating all of the sessions um, and helping put together the fabulous uh, lineup of sessions that we have uh, at the conference. Um, and uh, thank you uh, for this fabulous lineup um, of companies that have donated time uh, from their uh, staff to let them come and speak here at the show. Um, this is a, a sampling of the, of the companies that are represented here today. So um, we really appreciate, again, the support around um, open source um, and the fact that your company lets you come here and participate and join us at the show. Um, so thank you for everybody for that. Um, and then just a quick reminder, um, we announced a couple of weeks ago our European conference. Um, we're on the road again this year. Uh, we're going to go to Frankfurt. Uh, we've got a great location at the Radisson Blue there. Um, that is going to be the first week of November, so we moved it back a little later this year. Um, and uh, we're hoping uh, to open the call for papers um, sometime in the next month, probably. So keep an eye out for that. We'll definitely be sending out communications um, when that happens. Oh. All right, and so I want to introduce our first keynote speaker, um, which is uh, Peter Zaitsev. Um, he's the co-founder and CEO of Percona. Uh, he is one of the foremost experts on MySQL strategy and optimization, and he's leveraged both his technical vision and entrepreneurial skills to grow Percona from a two-person shop to one of the most respected open source companies in the business. Uh, Peter was an early employee at MySQL AB, eventually leading the company's high performance group, uh, he's a serial entrepreneur. He co-founded his first startup while attending Moscow State University, where he majored in computer science. Peter is co-author, as I mentioned earlier, of High Performance MySQL, Optimization, Backups, and Replication, which is one of the most popular books on MySQL performance. So, Peter, welcome. Good morning, uh, everyone. And I'm going to talk to you about my uh, favorite topic, the open source databases. And as you probably well know, that the open sources uh, databases have been uh, kicking ass, or pretty much kicking in the growth for uh, uh, open source uh, databases by uh, DB Engine rankings, which we, I think many of us uh, know, as well as if you look at the long-term popularity trend that right, have been uh, gradually eating the market away from proprietary uh, databases. What makes me also the most excited about uh, open source database is if you look at the new uh, generation uh, of uh, uh, approaches, right, uh, whatever that's been your key value stores or document databases, time series databases, in those areas we can see uh, their open source databases are completely dominating. Now, if you look at the popularity of uh, databases among developers, and this is a survey by uh, Stack Overflow, and we survey more than 100,000 of developers, so that is a pretty uh, big survey, uh, we can see what the uh, open source uh, uh, databases are absolutely dominating the, the uh, list of the top five, and their uh, MySQL is uh, uh, actually not only uh, their Mm, you know, dominating this group, but always uh, continuing to grow in the, uh, in the popularity. Now, uh, at Percona, our mission uh, is to champion unbiased open source database solution. Now, so what that really means uh, is what we are uh, really focused on providing uh, you best 100% uh, free open source software for, uh, uh, for uh, databases, which is uh, uh, the, uh, uh, designed to, for, uh, for both uh, enterprise and uh, uh, the other uh, use cases. We really believe what a lot of the open source power is the fact what uh, uh, it helps you to avoid uh, uh, vendor lock-in and that's what we uh, focus, uh, focus a lot. Now, not uh, uh, all open source uh, is the same. Now, you can see in our business, many open source companies, now it's actually say majority of open source companies really would be open core or uh, similar business models. 
Uh, we, uh, that is not what we do in Percona. While we believe those, uh, uh, it is fantastic those business model exists, and frankly, open source would not uh, get as much investment into that if uh, all the software would uh, be uh, only available as uh, open source. We believe it's uh, 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 great to have the completely free and open source database platforms available, and that is what we are uh, committing providing in, at, uh, at Percona. Now, uh, we spoke about a few uh, open source, uh, uh, no, show a few open source databases uh, out there. Let's look at what has been happening in the least, uh, recent years of the open source, uh, top open source databases. The MySQL is uh, as uh, strong as ever. That is uh, the most popular open source database uh, right now. That is the database of choice uh, in the cloud. If you look at all the cloud vendors, what is the first database as a service uh, technology they typically launch? That's uh, MySQL. MySQL 8 was just released uh, uh, last week, and it uh, really looks fantastic. A lot of great engineering went uh, in uh, MySQL 8, and we are uh, very uh, excited uh, about uh, it. And over internally at Percona, we really see explosive growth with MySQL continues in the enterprise space in particular. Where I would say in among the startups and here in Silicon Valley, MySQL can be the old news sometimes, but for uh, many uh, enterprise companies that is not the old news, but that is the up and coming uh, technology which is increasingly uh, uh, useful. Now at Percona, we provide uh, software uh, for MySQL, of course. Our Percona server and uh, uh, Percona XRDB uh, cluster are two uh, software packages, uh, database software packages we provide for uh, MySQL uh, ecosystem with a both free and open source and getting uh, a lot of uh, a lot of tractions, uh, especially among the enterprise customers. Also, Percona server for MySQL is the first MySQL variant uh, to support MyRox, right? And I hope you guys heard about MyRox. This is a storage engine which uh, was born uh, inside Facebook. It's really optimized for modern hardware. It allows you to uh, save costs. It's uh, great for uh, the uh, cloud usage. And uh, also yesterday, uh, they uh, won the Community Choice Award. So that is a really uh, cool storage engine for uh, you to check out. Now, MariaDB is also have been uh, doing quite great. Now, one thing I uh, uh, want to emphasize about uh, MariaDB, it is uh, not just a MySQL variant anymore. Especially, especially with MySQL 8, MariaDB is a very different database, uh, uh, database right now. And I think we can see very clearly over the next year or so, MariaDB having a very distinct focus on uh, uh, features to enhance Oracle compatibility. The area where I think they rightfully believe the MySQL team would not be uh, uh, willing to, to follow them. Now, another thing which is interesting with MariaDB, uh, well, it's having quite successful uh, demonizing Oracle, right? And uh, it's, uh, uh, I would say, uh, won the uh, distribution war uh, politics and really has uh, uh, replaced MySQL in many Linux distributions. As MariaDB is a different database than MySQL, I believe that is a misguided choice, but that's uh, uh, my opinion, uh, right? Which doesn't seem to be in majority, unfortunately. MariaDB at Percona uh, uh, has also been growing rapidly. You know, uh, 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 not everybody knows, but we do provide MariaDB support at Percona, and that is one of the uh, fastest growing areas uh, in, uh, in Percona. We had about 40% growth here over here at uh, m uh, among the customers uh, who use uh, MariaDB, often among other databases. And right now, about 15 of our customers use uh, MariaDB among other technologies. MongoDB is another top open source database technology, and it's uh, really showing the great uh, traction as well. In the recent versions, we have a huge improvement in uh, ease of use uh, uh, and uh, scalability and performance. MongoDB uh, Inc., uh, the company had a very successful IPO, and we can now uh, see from the stock actions report what it really has uh, continued its very 
uh, fast uh, pace. And more, uh, MongoDB, as we know, is by far the most popular uh, data store. Exciting news in the future are coming as well, with MongoDB 4 announced it will finally support uh, transactions, which will be uh, quite a big deal, which will make MongoDB much more uh, 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 feasible choice for many enterprise workloads. In MongoDB at Percona, uh, we provide Percona server for MongoDB, which is our enterprise grade drop in replacement for MongoDB, which we really invested a lot in creating the open source alternatives for many MongoDB enterprise features. And uh, this software has also been getting a great traction. We can see about 2x growth in the downloads from 2016 to 2017, and uh, we also have a, a 3x growth in uh, Percona Enterprise uh, customer base uh, uh, using this uh, software. We also announced uh, as of today, as of this week, Percona Zero for MongoDB 3.6 is uh, now available, so we are uh, on par supporting the latest version on MongoDB technology. Now, uh, when it looks like, uh, 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 let's talk about uh, a little bit general trends we see the open source database business. One thing that keeps me excited about the open source business is how much innovation there is going on. And there are indeed uh, many good open source uh, uh, technologies, many databases which we make particularly compelling for the different uh, database workloads. And one is biggest mistake I see and one of my kind of biggest stories is what very many development teams really try to uh, fit a kind of workloads which don't fit to the database they already have. You know, uh, trying to exactly use that as a uh, hammer to work with, uh, uh, with, a, uh, with a, uh, a screw. Now, at Vircona, we do believe in a, a polyglot persistence. And uh, that really matches a lot what we see among the customers as well. A lot of large uh, scale uh, organizations, both enterprise as well as uh, startups, if you are building the large scale technology, you tend to use more than one database technology to, uh, to do that, right? Because there are just so uh, many different uh, workload, different uh, 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 use cases we have. At Vircona, we did a survey recently, and we see what more than 50% of our customers use more than one uh, database technology, right? More than 20%, that will be a combination of uh, 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 two or more of MySQL, MariaDB, and, uh, and MongoDB. To target that, we provide uh, their universal support contract, which really allows you to cover multiple database technology with a single contract from uh, one vendor, and we uh, see a number of uh, folks finding that very valuable. But you guys may notice what something was missing from open source database portfolio at Percona. And if you look at those graphs, maybe you can guess what it is, right? Well, I can give you another hint. Uh, that is their database of a year by uh, DB Engine's uh, methodology, also known as uh, Postgres. And the fact, uh, at Percona, we are uh, going to be launching the PostgreSQL support to, uh, uh, in addition to support for MySQL, MariaDB, and, uh, and on MongoDB. With our Postgres support, we are going to support both uh, 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 on-premises deployment of open source Postgres uh, version as well as database as a service among the major uh, US cloud uh, providers. Now, okay, okay, finally. <laughs> okay, thank you to whoever started that. <laughs> okay. Now, let's look at the uh, modern database development and uh, what we are mm, uh, seeing here. There have been a lot of uh, mm, evolution uh, happening recently uh, in the database deployments among uh, multiple ve vectors. One is a cloud. Well, that is an old news, right? The cloud has been growing over very rapidly over the last probably 10 years now and uh, uh, it's uh, expected to, uh, to continue to
uh, public cloud uh, uh, presence. We see uh, 25 of those uh, uh, customers are using database uh, as a service, so that has been uh, growing a lot. And 33% uh, of our customers are looking for uh, running the database uh, in containers. Containers on the same adoption is actually quite hard. So what we are really uh, doing here to help, right, with those, uh, with those uh, all the trends. The first one is what we are, uh, have a partnership with uh, uh, Mesosphere to, uh, uh, to run the database uh, in, uh, make a da running database in containers easier. We started with uh, a Percona server for MongoDB for, uh, for various reasons, and now we announced that Percona uh, server for MongoDB beta version is available on uh, Mesosphere, and that will be certified solution and supported through our partnership with Mesosphere. I would uh, encourage you to try it out today and uh, let us know feedback. Uh, that. Now at Percona, we also believe a lot in the, uh, in the partnerships and uh, uh, we announced a partnership with Amazon last uh, no November on uh, the reInvent. Today we also announced partnership with Microsoft and with that uh, we are uh, have a partnership in place with top three uh, uh, U.S. cloud uh, uh, vendors <coughs> to uh, to help you uh, with your uh, using open source databases among those uh, uh, with them. With that, we also announced the Percona database um, support uh, uh, for database as a service, and this is a specially tailored support package for uh, database as a service environments which have a different support needs compared to you rolling a uh, database on the server on, uh, on your own. We are also announcing the uh, Percona DBA for database as a service. Again, for uh, database uh, needs and, uh, and, uh, and tasks are substantially different for uh, database as a service environment. Uh, and uh, uh, we are uh, there to meet you. With new DBA service, we have all three uh, major database as a server uh, platforms are uh, being covered. Finally, let me cover some of the modern worries which we hear from uh, our customers and uh, uh, how we uh, are working to help them. Uh, number one concern among the Percona customers and in, in general among the CTOs and CIO recently has been security and compliance. Right? Especially with uh, GDPR coming in Europe, that is no more something only enterprises have to, uh, to worry. Right? Even the smaller companies dealing with personal data have to, uh, uh, have to deal with that. Yeah. And uh, security and compliance is a very multidimensional topic, but one of them is uh, data encryption. Uh, we now announce what in Percona server for MySQL, uh, we uh, have released the advanced uh, encryption features. And what is the most important, we provide uh, their uh, open source centralized key management solution with uh, uh, HashiCorp uh, uh, Vault, uh, which uh, really makes that complete uh, open source uh, encryption solution, right, with no tie in to some other uh, closed source components required. We also have substantially improved the security of our uh, support tools uh, at Percona, which is uh, important for uh, our customers. Uh, if you are sending us the data, we have a tools to, uh, to anonymize the data such as query log and so on and so forth, so you can uh, feel confident you're not sell uh, sending uh, to our support ser uh, service with some personal identifiable data, as well as integration with our Percona monitoring management to share data with support team uh, uh, securely. What is the second biggest concern we see on, among our customer minds? Well, uh, a lot of our folks saying that the big concern for them is what with a new, very agile development method, there is a lot of risks of uh, uh,
solution management uh, solution for uh, now uh, the, uh, quite some time. And this is uh, software which is on a pretty quick release uh, timeline. There are new features coming up pretty much every, uh, every month or two. So I don't have a time to go through uh, all of them uh, here. Uh, but I will mention just one feature which we uh, released uh, for this conference today. And this is the to track application deployment with annotation. We now provide a very easy way to, to trigger information about the application uh, deployment. Where you can say, hey, you just deployed XYZ of this version. And if something starts funny to show up on the graph, which correlates with that deployment, you can uh, very mm, clearly see that. OK. So with that, where does all it leave us today? Uh, as I mentioned, the open source databases are growing uh, uh, and uh, as strong as ever uh, continues to grow, uh, especially, especially in the uh, inter enterprises which have been increasingly comfortable from using open source databases. And I think they're also at the same time being made increasingly uncomfortable with some uh, proprietary database, uh, database vendors. Uh, we also see what running multiple open source databases in the same, uh, in the same uh, uh, enterprise becomes increasingly common. I think there is increasing understanding growing what while uh, companies like Oracle may be able to provide you kind of complete stack uh, if you want to get uh, a comparable uh, solutions in the open source you're probably are going to uh, use uh, uh, different uh, uh, multiple different technologies to achieve same or actually even better uh, better results. At Mercona, we are really focused on uh, uh, helping you with, uh, oops. Yeah. Uh, with uh, helping you to, uh, to meet you with your key challenges. We meet you where you are, where that's on premises, in the cloud, database, or running data, uh, uh, database as a service, or running your database in containers. We are also really uh, focus on supporting you wh wherever your open source database of choice is. And we are really following uh, uh, or and working with you uh, with evolving as the industry, mm, industry evolves. Now with that, let me introduce uh, some of the technologies which uh, we choose to present and do a very short presentation about what they are doing. Most of those technologies are uh, not the most uh, uh, well known and the most famous, but I think they are uh, well uh, worth knowing about. With probably exception of VTES. With VTES now winning MySQL Community Awards, kind of like an Oscar of open source databases, where VTES and Shogo probably now uh, is uh, very famous. Okay. Okay, let's talk about our cool technologies lightning talks. And I will make an introduction and then we'll uh, have uh, those folks go in a pretty uh, rapid uh, uh, fashion. Nikolai Samakhvalov is the CEO of Nombox. Uh, he has more than 15 years of experience with various DMS and more than 10 years with PostgreSQL. Wait a second, I'm going to read you all. You know, you, yes, you see some people don't uh, read the briefing notes before the <laughs> <laughs> before I talk. Anyway, anyway, but you know what? I appreciate your level of energy and desire to get here on the stage and talk. We'll give you a chance. <gasps> no, I'm not mean. He's my good friend, so I can give him some, uh, some hard time. Yeah, okay. Okay, anyway. Uh, continuing uh, with uh, uh, our friend Nikolai, he has more than 10 years if, uh, of experience PostgreSQL and he has Master of Science with uh, MIPT and ISP RAS, speciality database systems, who would have guessed. Uh, he is also founder of Postalia Ru, Ru Postgres and a, a PostgreSQL user group for Russian speaking users. The second person who is going to speak is going to be uh, Shogu. Oh, he has a very complicated last name. I'm not even going to try to read it. But you know, he's the Shogu. I think he's the only Shogu you ever need to know. <laughs> uh, right, so he is the co-founder and CTO of Planet Scale Data. He created Vitesse projects in 2010 
and has been working uh, on it since then. He's currently focused on building and supporting Vitesse community. He loves to talk about distributed systems, consensus algorithm, as well as SQL parsers and optimizers. Okay. Uh, the next person is going to be Xu Hao Wu, uh, is software development of Shopee 5 for the last three years. His current work in, uh, includes improving and automating many aspects of database infrastructure for data storage team. The non-tracking software, Zhu Hao is pursuing Masters of Applied Science in Mechanical Engineering. And finally, last but not least, the Andy Pavla, who is Assistant Professor of a Databaseology. He tells me he is the only professor of database of, uh, of databaseology out there because he invented the term. Uh, yeah, and he is in the computer science department of Carnegie Mellon University. Okay, the facts, it's all yours. Now, Nikolai, you can uh, walk in. Now I don't have slides, okay. Uh, can somebody help me? Yeah, cool. Okay. Okay. I thought I'm the only one here, but okay. So I'm I'm Nikolai, and I'm uh, I work with Postgres over a decade already, and uh, I built several startups uh, which use it heavily, and it allows them to scale. And uh, I'm not going to advertise Postgres for you. Uh, Peter already did it a lot. Uh, with announcement that Percona are start, starting support for Postgres. Uh, I'm going to talk how to make uh, your database uh, work more automated and effective. Uh, if you go to Hacker News, I, I'm sure most of you know this uh, good uh, place to discuss technologies. Uh, there is a thread uh, each month, a public thread, who is hiring? So it contains a lot of. Oh, now it, is, it, it contains a lot of job postings and uh, Postgres uh, mentioned a lot there, but word DBA isn't mentioned there. So this shows that among startups, uh, database administra administrator profession almost disappeared. And why? First of all, thank you. First of all, it's because of clouds and DevOps technologies. So when a uh, team of engineers starts, starts a new project, they feel that they don't d need DBA because uh, they can solve many issues themselves. Uh, so what is already automated? Uh, instance provisioning, uh, setup replicas, uh, automated backups. In some cases, automated failover is already also automated in like in cloud providers, providers like RDS, uh, and only basic monitoring. When you need to scale and optimize your performance, performance of your system, you again need, need uh, database expertise. And uh, this is my final, like, ultimate goal to add new uh, solutions which will allow you to automate optimization. So I'm work on the right part of this slide. Uh, inside Postgres uh, only uh, world. Uh, I started from very, very first uh, small step. I started to analyze my, my uh, activity and activity of my colleagues when they analyze and uh, performance bottlenecks, find them and prevent and, and optimize them. So I collected uh, many useful scripts uh, and put it to, to uh, this uh, project. It's called Postgres DBA. It, it is very, very easy to install, and uh, it allows you to get a menu right inside Postgres uh, console. So you, you just type colon DBA and see these scripts. These, script, script, these scripts allow you to quickly f understand uh, what is the health of your database? Uh, many things are not included in most monitoring systems. So, actually, Postgres DBA usually usually 
copy-paste useful script to console and understand things which are not shown in monitoring. And it, it is very easy to extend. You can put your own reports there just with single line of uh, code. But what next? Uh, this, is, this, this tool is cool and it's very, very simple, but actually it doesn't autom automate uh, things. Uh, and it's still for experts. Uh, I see my, my final, like, f uh, ultimate goal of, of uh, database optimization is automation is not only detect bottlenecks, but also prevent them. To, for example, if experienced DBA sees that uh, developer missed an uh, index on, on a column, it, 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 uh, this DBA doesn't need to wait until data comes. Uh, it's obvious for him, from his past experience, that index should be created there. So to also, in some cases, uh, it's very different, difficult to understand what is the best index type in Postgres or what is the best uh, Postgres settings in Postgres config. And to find better uh, things, better solutions, you need to do a lot of experiments. You can build a good automated pipeline which allows you to conduct experiments and find better uh, parameters uh, just with open, open source tools listed here. If you want to understand more, come tomorrow and hear my talk at 11 a.m. We will go to details. Uh, this is like funny, a funny slide, slide with robots. So I'm, I see like I'm building three robots, artificial DBAs. Uh, each one is in different topic. This expert is in a different topic, and they communicate with each other and with human. Thank you. All right. Uh, good morning. Uh, so my name is Sugu. I'll be, uh, thank you, <laughs> I'll be talking about Vitesse and a project that I've been uh, super excited about. Uh, uh, next slide. Yeah. Cool, so uh, I did not exchange notes with Peter before, but I'm surprised at uh, the coincidence and the number of uh, trends that both him and I have in common in terms of seeing what's happening in the industry. Uh, so, uh, among the trends that he talked about, these are the ones that um, Vitesse addresses uh, of things that are happening in the data industry. Uh, one is uh, transactional data is exploding. Uh, I mean, data itself is exploding, but most people have tried to uh, keep that away from transactional data, but now that trend has caught up to uh, people that are running databases. Now it's beginning to affect everyone. Like eight years ago when we started with TESS, uh, it was just, uh, we thought it would be just companies like YouTube and Facebook facing this data explosion in uh, uh, relational databases. But now we are seeing uh, small and medium businesses easily outgrow the size of a single database instance. And uh, that is now, I think it's a problem that's pretty much caught up to everyone. And uh, with TESS is trying to address that problem. The other trend, obviously, is the move to the cloud. And what I'm noticing is that uh, databases are kind of uh, lagging behind in this trend. Uh, applications are moving much faster. People are more hesitant about moving database to the cloud. And this is something that Vitesse will definitely help. And I'll show you some um, uh, case studies about this. And uh, the third one is the other one that's been uh, people talking about is DBAs are redefining themselves. Uh, they are beginning to take on uh, some of the SRE roles are becoming uh, hybrid engineers. They are now rebranding themselves as DBEs or database engineers. And this is a change that uh, Vitesse is uh, compatible with. So what does uh, Vitesse do? Essentially, Vitesse is a sharding middleware. And um, uh, the unique thing about Vitesse is uh, instead of reinventing the wheel from the ground up, it leverages what is already awesome, which is MySQL. So what it means to you is that if 
you are running a MySQL database and you are suddenly at capacity and need to grow, all you need to do is deploy Vitess on top and reshard underneath. And Vitess takes away the pain of sharding uh, away from the application. So in other words, you don't have to do a complete rewrite if you have to reshard your data. Uh, the middleware will make sure that uh, most of your queries will work as is, just like they used to work before. And uh, all you, um, you, you still have to deal with the fact that you have now distributed your, your data and that it's there in more than one place. So some queries may have to be rewritten by the fact that data has to be fetched from multiple places, so uh, they may not work like before. But mostly, it's a very low impact uh, job to migrate to Vitess. Uh, I would say like 90 to 95% of your queries will work uh, as is. And uh, resharding uh, is not a one-time thing. After you shard, the next thing that you have to do is within six months, you have to reshard. So that is another pain that Vitess takes away from you. You can reshard completely transparently uh, with no change in the application and no downtime at all. So that is something that has been proven and done multiple times. And uh, the other thing that is the big innovation in um, uh, Vitess is uh, the sharding scheme. It actually separates out the sharding engine from the sharding scheme and provides a formal uh, interface between the two. This is actually uh, stuff that is, uh, that, uh, is inspired by Michael Stonebreaker's work back in the 1990s. Uh, I don't know if many of you, uh, you might have heard of a company called Illustra that was acquired by Informix. I was there when it happened. So this uh, idea is actually inspired from that and it's actually worked out pretty well. And obviously Vitess is cloud ready and has some awesome uh, observability features. And uh, this is actually uh, all these things coming together have actually inspired uh, the industry to actually adopt Vitess um, uh, pretty extensively. There's a lot of momentum now behind. There's actually many more companies that are currently on this slide that are uh, checking Vitess out. The uh, a few companies that I wanted to point out is uh, JD.com, HubSpot, and uh, Stitch Labs. Those three companies have been running uh, on Kubernetes using Vitess for a, a few years now, so especially Stitch Labs has been running on Kubernetes for a while. And they've been running at massive scale, very high QPS, and very reliably. So it is now proven that you can run um, MySQL in containers reliably uh, and uh, at, very, at, at massive scale. So that is one thing. And you also notice that uh, it's not just the usual suspects that are beginning to uh, use with test, there are actually much smaller companies, which is uh, evidence that uh, data is actually exploding and affecting everyone. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, what I would say is, uh, do not fear putting data in MySQL, uh, because uh, we believe scalability is a solved problem. In fact, if you have moved data out of MySQL because you couldn't scale, it's time to bring it back, because we can help you scale. <laughs> and. Uh, do not fear running in the cloud. These companies have paved the way for us, uh, and uh, we know how to make that work. Uh, and there are some Vitesse sessions that uh, you can uh, check out. Uh, there's uh, sessions from uh, Slack, both from an engineer point, way, point of view and a DBA point of view. And uh, I'm also giving a talk on observability, which actually uh, takes away many of the fears that um, Vitesse operators have, uh, and it will show you how easy it is to uh, deploy and uh, run with this. And thank you very much. I'll see you out there. <laughs>